Common Projects Watch. This is a B. Now what if you think deed on them had $200 million worth of assets being seized was a crazy figure. Wait till you hear about this one. But we're talking about Andrew Hamilton who lose five hundred million worth of assets already and could potentially lose another five hundred million. We're talking about a billionaire Usha. Yes. Actual billionaire. In Jamaican currency, but still billionaire. Come going further, we have a patron birthday shout out to none other than Sebastian. Today Sebastian turned 15 years old. So you know this is coming straight from your father, Ernesto. You want to make you know say he's very proud of you, or he's proud of your progression, alright, he love you and support you all the way. So Sebastian, enjoy yourself, enjoy your time with your family. Continue, remain focused, continue to make appearance to your family proud scene. We can move into the video. So as I say, Andrew Hamilton, one of the richest pushers many Jamaicans have never even heard of. He now holds the title right, of the pusher with the largest right, asset recovery order in Jamaican history. He has so far had to forfeit 500 million and he might end up losing another half a billion. Remember, this is just physical assets that they can see and with them fine. I highly doubt them find every single thing when they have. Plus, you know, so things like cash easier for bury and stash. Away. So, this man was moving some serious weight. Surpassed even Dino Nemard's right, forfeit number, which was 200 million. And by Dino, they lose much care and properties and anything there. Andrew Hamilton is an ex police officer and postal worker who end up becoming, right, as I say, a major pusher in the acidic game. His previous jobs probably helped him in the business. Ex-police, ex-postal worker, that means uh, he have an understanding of the law and logistics. Especially that postal worker part. Let's just say no three about things from one place to the next. Even if he went to another country, like Uncle Sam, the basics still apply. Remember, there are some industries, if you learn the basics, you can go to our next place and apply it. Even if you know, the local details here and there is different, you have a good idea how things work. But Mr. X Cop, ex postal worker. After Uncle Sam will on him, he took a plea deal and was sentenced four years for a lesser herbs charge. Yes, was sentenced to four years. When you see somebody I push them kind of weight, uh, them kind of money, uh, and you see them kind of sentence, uh, well, let's just sum it up as unicorn lucky. Let's just call it that. After being convicted, the US feds, right, the DEA to be precise, started to work with the IRI. FID, which is the branch that deal with them type of things that they talk about you know, to cover assets and everything there, right? mostly financial type of crime, big money crime, them thing there. After them did the investigations, they realized that him son and other family members had very expensive properties in their name and they couldn't show how they acquired them legally. Further investigation into how the money was being laundered right, would lead the investigators them to the offices of one of your favorite prominent lawyers. Now, this is surprising because, as we all know, right, there is no precedent for lawyers being involved in money laundering at all. None. None. At least not in Unicorn land. So, this is probably shocking right, to everybody. Um, who could imagine that? So this is probably shocking for some of you. I mean, who would think it? So after Hamilton get charged and sentenced, I'm going to say, he plead to a lesser charge. Right. Then he end up get the money laundering case. And that's when time, right. he upon the shout, say, 
Don satisfied Allen, who is the lawyer, was subsequently charged. And her husband, Terence, who is a realtor, was also charged, along with various family members who they realized have properties in the name, as I said before. The husband and wife team is very interesting because when you're buying a place, right, you normally work with a lawyer and a realtor. And here, the wife of the lawyer and the husband are the realtor. And it looked like Andrew Hamilton's preferred choice right, of land and fee money was in properties. Right? That is where he stash a fee money. Which is a common strategy, by the way. Right? Enough people, especially in the diet coat game, herbs game, whatever. Anytime they try hiding the money, first thing they try to do right, is apartment, house, and everything, like construction, real estate, that type of thing. So the lawyer and the realtor married, and the two of them ended up getting caught up in this money laundering case. Listen to what Andrew Hamilton lost in the forfeiture. So far, them take a total of 14 homes. Yes, 14 homes. Now, why somebody would want to stash out so much money in so much properties? I don't know. I guess him thinks say. You know, just put things in a smaddle's name and you'll be alright. Because right, that's, that's what people used to say, right? That was a common advice, especially back in the day before people realized, right? Say, governments are no much smarter than they used to. Right? It used to be a case of, oh, just put it in your mother's name. Just put it in your son's name. That used to work back in the day. Right? Not anymore, apparently. So, 14 homes. Here is a small breakdown of some of them. A penthouse suite. In Narbrook. Two apartments in Narbrook. A mansion in Ironshore, St. James. So you already see, say, an upscale, right? The money deal with. Six apartments in one gated complex in St. Andrew. Six apartments. Four cars, four bulldozers, a boat. And a bank account with 19 million dollars cash. That's just what they could find. I highly doubt that's all there is to it. Right? But they managed to find that and them seize that. They might try the other things. So let me say this guy was moving some serious weight. Half a billion dollars right, in a property and car and, and boat and all kind of things. The spooky thing about some of these assets recovery thing is that the government did come out one time and said they actually have a hard time selling them. The spooky thing about this asset recovery thing is that after a while the government right, tries to sell the property for example and then the money then supposedly go back right, into the system and is used for other things. That's what them say. Right, them sell by them property yeah? then the money go back right, into the coffers and then it get put to quote unquote good use. But the problem with the government I think more against is that no people go and buy them. Right? Because imagine you know, some big diet coat pusher right? go, go build mansion and then lose mansion. Right? You buy it and the next thing I drive past the yard I look in at the yard that used to be female right? and then you and I go make four. And you are look on him now and say I'm Bill Lewis. I don't know about the government say they have a problem selling on some of these properties. To make things worse for Hamilton and Co., the parents' council just handed down a landmark ruling that allowed Mocha to seize some of the assets that were bought before the Poker Act was enacted. Right, so you have Mocha and you have Poker. Poker is the proceeds of Crime Act. Right? That is what they use right, for seize assets like this. It's something the lawyers and um, the, the accused were saying enough of them place I buy before the poker act come in so left them on the but the parents council said even though they were bought before right, the act come in right, the same principle apply so them can get seized too. Now you might be wondering what kind of parents council you are talking about? You mean like the parents teacher association? You mean PTA gets so powerful? No. I'm talking about the Privy Council. 
Jamaica is a child state. If your final court decisions are made by people who live in another country, people who some of them don't even have citizenship in your country, then you are a child state. An adult state have them final court on their soil. No American, British or Russian decision right, when it comes down to the final court decision is made in another country. As you know, anytime the Jamaican courts make a decision, the UK Privy Council, aka the Parents Council, right, can say no, that can't work, or them say we give you permission to continue. So the parents have spoken right, and they've said right, them agree. Even though some of the places I bought before the Poker Act, they can still get seized. So yes, you can dress it up and make it sound as fancy all you want. But if you need to ask permission before you leave the yard, then you are a child. You can kick all the big words and speeches you want, but adult nations don't act and then wait for permission from another country to say you can continue or you should stop. Anyway, I digress. So Hamilton is now the poster child for losing assets. His lawyer and her husband and his family them in a serious problem too. In time you see, any criminal operate in a certain industry, certain field, especially things like real estate. Just know set them up, a lawyer will inquire help them. Now in this case, this lawyer get catch and get charged. But many don't. Wouldn't you see big money crime? When time the crime start feeding involved the hundreds of millions and everything there. Right? Understand the people from the more formal side of society have to be involved. Now look at 87, now look at Pusha, right. now I've got to navigate through things like the real estate industry and now I've got to navigate through things like the banking industry without some kind of help from somebody who wears a suit and tie on a daily basis. So, I'm currently in a court, I fight it out same way regarding the money laundering case, so I've got to see how that goes. What I find interesting is that sometimes I catch a lawyer right, I thief money from a client Right, and then the U.S. said you're disbarred, but then they get charged. And then the U.S. say a next lawyer might get catch, I would hold money, whatever, and then they get charged. So I would love to know what's the decision making process behind charging a lawyer or just disbarring them. Because we see Patrick Bailey get disbarred, Jennifer Masadi get disbarred, but from what I understand, they haven't been officially charged for nothing. So there's enough evidence there to say, yeah. Some kind of money thief in go on, disbar them. But there's not enough evidence to bring a criminal case. I don't know. I'm no expert. Just a little YouTuber. Anyway, Patreon Squad, big up on the cell. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. More life. Ultra Squad, say circling. Bless.